Okay, for this part of the question then, as you can see I've drawn a sketch and I would encourage you to do something much the same. So we're told that after rebounding from the wall, P collides directly with this particle Q of mass 2 kilograms and it's moving with a speed of 3 meters per second towards P. And we're told that the coefficient of restitution between P and Q is given as E equals a third. And we've got to show that there'll be a second collision between P and the wall. So you'll notice also I've updated P, the mass of P is 4 kilograms, and also the speed of P after it left the wall. We discovered in the previous part it was 2 meters per second. So how do we go about showing that there's going to be a second collision between P and the wall? Well, what we need to do is consider the velocities after impact. So I'm just going to write down here after the impact. And I'm going to make no assumptions as to the directions that P or Q are going to be moving with. I'm going to assume that they maybe move to the left but it's totally up to you okay and it's good to experiment in questions like this just to gain that confidence just change the direction say it should work out to the same result at the end of the day so I'm going to say that this is the final velocity of Q and this is the final velocity of P and I'm going to take the positive sense of motion as being to the left. Now we're going to consider the conservation of linear momentum and Newton's law of impact. Get two equations and solve them simultaneously for these velocities VP and VQ. And what I'm hoping to find is that VP turns out to be a negative value. That will tell me it's moving in the opposite direction to what we've got here. In other words, it's heading towards the wall. Alright? But do experiment. Do experiment with your sign, your direction here, and your direction of your arrows. And you should find that the mathematics will tell you that VP will be towards the wall. Okay? So we'll start then with the conservation of linear momentum. So we're looking at the momentum before impact equaling the total momentum after impact. So if we start with Q then we've got its mass which is 2 times its velocity which is going to be minus 3 as the velocity here is in the opposite direction to the positive sense. Plus then we need the momentum of P so it'd be its mass 4 times its velocity which is going to be plus 2 as that's in the direction of the plus sense here. And that's going to equal then the final momentum of Q which will be its mass 2 times its velocity VQ and then plus the momentum of P which will be 4 times its velocity VP. Both VP and VQ then are in that positive sense. So if we simplify this then, what we've got here is minus 6 plus 8, so that's going to equal 2. And we've got that 2 equals 2VQ two then plus 4VP. And we could divide through by 2 at this stage, so we end up with 1 equals VQ plus 2VP. Now, knowing that we've got simultaneous equations coming up, I'm going to rearrange this to make VQ the subject. So VQ will equal 1 minus 2VP if we subtract 2VP from both sides. So I'll put that equation on hold. We'll call it equation 1. Now I'm going to look at Newton's law of impact. Okay, so we'll just say uh, we'll come up here I think, I've got some room here. Also we know that one third 
that's the coefficient of restitution, equals the relative speed of separation divided by the relative speed of approach. Now the relative speed of separation must be VQ minus VP. Remember VQ must have a greater speed than VP. So it will be VQ minus VP for the relative speed of separation and that's divided by the relative speed of approach. Well they're going to be approaching one another at a speed of 5 meters per second. That would be the result of doing 3 plus 2. So we therefore have that this is going to be 5 and if we multiply both sides by 5 we get 5 thirds equals VQ minus VP. And if we now rearrange this say and well, what, could, what could we do? Well, oh no, we won't rearrange it. I mean, I could make VQ the subject, but I think I'll substitute VQ directly into this. So uh, we can say substitute, okay, 1 into, we'll call that equation 2, shall we? Okay, into 2. And if we do that, we therefore have 5 thirds equals VQ, which is 1 minus 2 VP minus the further VP. So we therefore have 1 minus 3 VP okay, equals that 5 thirds and if we say subtract 1 from both sides we therefore have minus 3 VP equals 5 thirds minus 1 which is going to be 2 thirds and if we now divide by minus 3, we end up with VP equaling minus 2 ninths. Minus 2 ninths meters per second. But the point that we wanted was that we've got a negative sign here. And it's in the opposite sense to our positive direction. So therefore, we can see that therefore P reverses okay direction it heads back towards the wall in other words so therefore it follows that there will be an, a second impact okay there'll be a second impact with the wall okay so we'll just squeeze that in there with the wall so I hope that's given you some idea then how you can go about that do experiment with this question Change the directions, as I said, okay? Change possibly the sense. Do your equations again and figure out then what happens to VP. You should always find that it reverses direction, okay? And heads back towards the wall. So good luck with that. And uh, that brings us now to the end of this question.